Hello and welcome to the Cyber One YouTube channel. My name is Ray and in this video we're going to have a look at this device. Uh, this is a small analog tester, uh, mostly for industrial use. Uh, I found this on Banggood a little while back. It caught my attention because it does fill a need that um, I have at work. In industry, we use several different types of signal to give an analog feedback or control to devices out in the field. And they can be difficult to test. So some of the signals we, we use may include PWM, so pulse width modulation, where the duty cycle is the amount of power we're using. Uh, other systems like RC servos, for example, the pulse width is more important than the frequency or the period. So you can have a very slow update rate at say 50 hertz or lower, but you must have a pulse width that measures the correct number of microseconds. In the case of an RC servo, that's 500 to 2500 microseconds. In industry, however, we tend to use a pulse width where the duty cycle matters most. And that's mostly used in heating applications. So we will output a pulse width with a duty cycle to operate a heater uh, using a solid state relay or something along those lines. The other analog signals that we tend to use a lot include 0 to 10 volts, usually used in very short range. Uh, to control things like uh, variable speed or variable frequency drives where they will provide a 10 volt reference voltage, a ground point and an analog input and you simply put a potentiometer with the wiper connected to the analog input one side of the resistor to the 10 volt and the other side to the zero to give you a voltage reference feeding back. This is all well and fine but a 0 to 10 volt signal over a long distance tends to pick up a lot of noise in industry. Uh, electromagnetically speaking, industry tends to be a very noisy environment with lots of signals going on and off. Uh, it mains power. In Australia, in industry, we tend to use three phase power at 415 volts AC, 50 hertz. And if you run one of your cables anywhere near one of these main power feed cables, it will introduce interference into the line at 50 hertz. When you look at a 0 to 10 volt signal, there are three wires involved. Your ground, your signal and your reference voltage, usually 10 volts. When you have a extraneous signal introduced to it, it usually introduces the same amount of voltage to all three conductors at the same time. While it will cancel out to a point on the uh, positive 10 volt and the ground, the signal however won't be cancelled out and your base reference offset from your source supply will also be increased essentially by three volt on that interference signal and so you can get erroneous results back. One of the more common methods used in industry right throughout a large site is 0 to 20 or 4 to 20 milliamps. And that's something that this device will actually test. So measuring a voltage 0 to 10 volts with a multimeter is easy and can be done out in the field without any trouble at all. Uh, measuring PWM, a lot of multimeters, including several of mine, will measure the frequency and the uh, duty cycle. So far, I've only got one meter that can actually read even close to the 4 to 20 milliamp, and it's only to the 1 milliamp resolution. And our 4 to 20 milliamp uh, signal tends to be at a much higher resolution than that. And that's where this little device comes in. It has a lithium ion battery built into it, a nice switch at the bottom for turning it on. It charges via USB. The USB doesn't appear to be connected in any way to the data lines. It only uses it for uh, charging purposes. 
So this thing will produce a PWM signal. Uh, the manual comes in two languages. So it starts out in Chinese. So this was Chinese designed. And if you find the staples in the middle, you find where English starts. And it actually lists the active components. Now, 4 to 20 milliamps is a really interesting signal setup and is very, very common. Uh, I have seen in the industry where 0 to 20 milliamps is used, and that's normally when your outside power source or your outside your sensor has a separate power source, it can provide 0 to 20 milliamp. But a lot of devices are what we call loop powered. So they need some current flowing because power is volts times amps. So they need some current flowing to actually have power for them to work in themselves. So the 4 milliamp provide combined with the voltage that's provided on the line from our device oh, like from our controller uh, will provide the power for our sensing device a uh, typical example of that is a pressure sensor so you can set up your pressure sensor you can supply say 24 volt down the line or 30 volt down the line typically it's 24 volt the sensor at the end will leach some of that power up to four milliamps worth to run the pressure sensor and its electronics. It will then add load. So it will actually cause more current to flow over on top of that four milliamp in order to send a signal up to uh, 20 milliamps worth. And you can get very accurate readings from those. Because it's a current we're reading and not a voltage that we're reading on our input, it tends to be more immune to electromagnetic interference being introduced into the wires. Again, in this case, uh, an electromagnetic interference spike, uh, whether that be uh, RF, inductive or capacitive, tends to affect both wires the same way. And in this case, the current is flowing in one direction in one wire and in the opposite direction in the other. And so the interference tends to cancel out. So yeah, I thought I'd just uh, show off this device. Uh, I found it on Banggood. I will put a link in the description if I can find it again. Uh, it's an SG0031. Uh, F-N-I-R-S-I, I think it is. I've never heard of it, this before, this brand. Uh, but it is one of those things where we use a lot of 4 to 20 milliamp in the industry and I've never been able to really accurately read it. So what you see on the, the bench here is what came in the package. So we've got the manual in two languages. Uh, it, the English version has been translated from Chinese, so it does take a little bit of reading. You get the device itself and it's actually a nice clear display, but it's not a very intuitive display. Uh, I have managed to work through a number of the settings. It will loop power, so it will power the loop. So I have actually connected it to a pressure sensor. Uh, in this case, it was uh, a low value pressure sensor and it powered the sensor and I was able to get a feedback and see the current changing. So yeah, I, I think it's actually going to be very useful once I get a, a handle on driving it properly. It will show you a graph. Uh, this is a 4 to 20 milliamp, so you can actually make it act as the load. So you can send a test signal into a controller. Um, in this case, I think that one is a voltage output and this is a 24 volt out. So we can actually send out a voltage or we can actually just send out 24 volt. Let me just go back through the, the link. So this is our 4 to 20 milliamp. We can actually adjust how many milliamps it will allow to pass through for our testing. And this is all controlled by this ESC out button. I have 
like I said, the manual is not very clear on its operation. Here we can actually put a voltage on and program out or program this out to put a set voltage. It only puts out to around about, I think the max was 30 volts. Yeah, voltage, oh, voltage input is 30 volts. Voltage output, sorry, only puts out to 15 volts. But since our output voltages in normal signaling is only up to 10 volts, that should be more than enough. 24 volt off, uh, reading in milliamps, and this is where you can turn the output on and you can actually get, it'll actually output 24 volts on through the loop and it'll measure the current flowing through that. And that's where it becomes really handy for testing a sensor that's for the 20 milliamp loop powered. And there are some, oh, there are a lot of sensors out there that are like that. The aforementioned pressure transducers, I have seen ultrasonic uh, radar, or ultrasonic range sensors, uh, radar range sensors that are all loop powered. And so this works really well for that sort of thing as well. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't an overly expensive tool. Uh, I will put the cost in the description when I find it again. All of our terminals are at the end, so we can get our power in. The ones I've used the most are the out and common, uh, which I used for measuring the 4 to 20 milliamp with it driving the power. Down on the bottom side, we have our power switch. We have a charge indicator and we have USB-C. Now in the, the pack, it came supplied with this USB cable, uh, which is USB-A on one side and USB-C on the other. And it came with these four fly leads. With a plug that plugs into these quite easily and gives you an alligator clip on the other side. So I happen to have handy here a resistor which I've measured at 329 ohms or I think it was that one at the bottom. They are a 1% tolerance. So in theory I've got this on. If I've got a 300 and So you can see it's actually uh, outputting 24 volt and through that it's going to put a lot of current out. So the output voltage will be dropping as a result. What I need is a better resistor. I'll just grab one. So that's supposed to be a 1k ohm resistor. So if I connect this up to 1k ohm. Maybe not the best one, but it is showing 21 milliamps flowing. And if we go back, at the maximum current it will pass through and read is 24 milliamp. So it's basically doing what we're expecting it to do. If I put a larger resistor on, uh, we should get a lower current read. So this is 5.6k ohm. having trouble gripping this it's been inside the plastic and that's 4.04 .04 milliamp so with a 24 output a 24 volt output if we do the maths we'll get around about the 4 milliamp range which is what we're getting. Okay, so the input voltage, it will actually measure an input voltage. Uh, if I connect that to in, I do have a small power supply handy that I can connect to it. Okay, 
which I'll just turn on. Right, so our common is the blue wire. So I just connect that to ground. I think I can turn this open this clamp. Now my output is that pass fires tuned to 5.9 volts or thereabouts. I'd be more inclined to go with this than that power supply. And I've just turned that up to 7, 8, 8 8.1, 8 8.0 volts. Now I do have another multimeter I can test with. volts DC I measure my power supply within 0.01 of a volt so as I said I would trust this more than I would my power supply I think uh, the voltage testing range seems to be pretty good so you can use this to test your power supply to make sure that you are getting approximately the right voltage to what you're expecting to get. You can measure the milliamp current that you're getting back and you can have this act as a passive current source. So you can specify what current's going through. It'll also do PWM, uh, which I haven't played with on this. So it's going to cover most industrial monitoring and testing. So that'll do for this video. If you like videos like these, don't forget to click on like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If you've got questions about these things, I do have a Discord. You know, leave a question in the comments by all means, but also come and see me in Discord. Um, I'm happy to answer questions where I can. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you that. Uh, if I do know the answer, I'll, I'll tell you as much as I can. The Discord community is a community and it is growing. And we talk about lots of different things, not just tools, but also robots. Uh, if you'd like to help this channel grow further, I also have a Patreon account. You can help support me with purchases like this uh, this is not sponsored this is one I've had to actually purchase a big uh, thanks to my patreon supporters VIPs go lucky Lorenzberg and also my builder level patreons Al Morales 45 and Ratchet and we'll see you in the next video